Hi, hello lads. So, um, uh, this is one I think I might have done a long time ago in fifth year with you, and bringing it back anyway, but giving an under lease, lease of life. It's a nice little algebraic logs. So, log to the base a of 2 is equal to p, and log to the base a of 3 is equal to q, and where a is obviously greater than 0. We teach the following in terms of p and q. The log to the base a of 8 over 3. Okay, well, first of all, there's a log rule for this. So let's change that. So, we've now got the log to the base a. Uh, division is the same as a subtraction. Now, this is a power of 2. Now, log to base a of 3, well, that's q. There's a rule in logs for that. So we can bring that in front, okay? So we can bring that in front. So now we've got three log to the base A of two, and of course that is P. So that's three P minus Q. And we've written it in terms of P and Q, which is pretty cool. Okay, All right, let's try the second one. Log to the base a of 9a squared over 16. Okay, we have rules for these already. So let's go at it. Log to the base a of 9a squared minus log to the base a of, what's this? 16. That's a power of 2. That's log to the base a of 2 to the power of 4 minus, well, this is something squared. That's a squared number, and that's a squared number. So that's the log to base a of 3a squared. Okay? So you can see where, where this is going. Okay? So let us see what we can do here. This can go in front. That's a multiplication, but let's deal with this one first. This one can go in front. So that's minus 4q, or is it 4p? I can't remember. What's log to the base a of 2? That's p. That's 4p. All right. So this one now, this one's very unusual because that's twice both of them. So that's twice the log to the base a of 3 plus twice the log to the base a of a. Right. Well, twice log to the base a of 3, that's twice q plus two times log to the base a of a is one so plus two minus four p no oh, that's a nice one i think it's a very nice one so let's try another one nice right. so it's uh 2018 first part of that question listen we've done that today we know how to do these triples, and anyway. well, I'm not going to do another one of them. But um, this is a nice, interesting one, this one here. Okay, so we have 2x minus 3 over x plus 2 greater than or equal to 3, and we need to solve it. Okay, well, this it sounds pretty innocuous, what they're asking us to do. It doesn't sound like it's too, I suppose, crazy. So how do we solve it? Well, the trick is with these is to multiply both sides by the square of the denominator. So that's really going to be 2x minus 3 over x plus 2 by x plus 2 squared greater than or equal to 3 by x plus 2 squared. And of course, one of them cancels with that. So on the left-hand side, we're just going to end up with 2x minus 3 by x plus 2. And on the right-hand side, we're going to get 3 times, let's expand this a little bit, we're going to have 3 times square the left, Square the right, and apply them together, and double it. Okay, so that's going to be three x squared plus twelve x plus twelve, and on this side, we're going to have two x squared plus x minus six. Now we're going to bring them all together. And what are we going to look like? Bring us all. We're going to have uh, x squared. 
and we're going to have, uh, let me see, over you got 11x, and we've got an 18. And flip the sign because I'm bringing that over there, so it's making a negative x squared, so I need to turn it around. Less than or equal to zero. Okay, so let's factorize this. X, X, nine and two, and plus and plus. So, less than, let's draw this. Okay, so again, it's always important to do a little inspection drawing on this. This is positive, so it's a happy face, but we want it where it's less than zero, so it's going to be between these two. So that's minus two, minus nine, and minus two. So it's going to be greater than minus nine and less than minus two. So X is going to be greater than minus nine and oh be careful look at that not equal to minus two so we can only do less than minus two. Oh, that's cheeky that's very cheeky i don't like that at all see that little tricksy because usually you just go less than or equal to greater than or equal to whatever but oh look at that be careful of that that's that that's 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 vicious okay that's not nice at all no i wouldn't like that at all so let's have a look what have we got next so i hope you can see this one down here at the bottom if not i'll read it to you the expansion of 2x plus 1 multiplied by x squared plus px plus 4 the coefficient of x is twice the coefficient of x squared and we need to find the missing thing okay so basically what they're saying is when you multiply it out that's basically listen just go for it i would now listen there's another way of doing this of course there is but you know let's just go for it let's just multiply it out so we're going to multiply out 2x plus 1 multiplied by x squared plus px plus 4. so you can use your array method or you can just multiply it out old school so you're going to get 2x cubed uh, plus 2px squared plus 8x plus x squared plus px plus 4. let's tidy this all up or do we need to? Let's have a look. What we're asked to do is the coefficient of x is twice the coefficient of x squared. So there's the x squared bit there. The x squared bit is that bit. And then the coefficient of x is that bit. So you have 8x plus px is equal to twice two p x squared plus x squared that's what we're really saying okay so listen um let's see what we can do here that's really going to be like there's an x squared in both of them so that's just the same as saying and there's an x in both of them so on their own that's just eight plus p and on its own, that's just going to be 2 on 2p plus 1. So let me see, 2, that's 4p minus 3p. So we're talking about p equal to 2, I think. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about p is equal to 2. Okay. So what I did there is, just in case you're kind of under the hot, take this side. That's the coefficient of x. Sorry, I'll just cover that. So if you look up at this original one that I multiplied out, the coefficient of x are an 8x and a px. And if I have an 8x and a px, isn't that just the same as an 8 and a p? Because the x is common. So that's why I've written down there. Now, separately, if I pull out all the x squareds, double them is equal to the left-hand side. So both of them contain an x squared, so it's the same as both of them just not having the x squared at all, because the ratio should be the same. Now, you might be asked, well, why, if, if you divide everything across, no, but you, you can you deal with them separately before you put them together, and that way you can you can be sure of it, okay? Because no matter what happens to the x, if x is 1, think about it this way, if x is 1, that's what you're really saying, okay? Now, we know x isn't 1, but it would work. The ratio would be the same. That's the beauty of it. So it's, it's a bit of an unusual one, a bit of a weird one. Okay, so let's have a go at something else. Hi, I found this one. This one's a very nice one. Okay, this is from a 2017 paper. Okay, so this one's a little bit more, I don't know, would you say, 
I'm not even sure how you'd, you'd classify this one, but it is a nice one regardless. So we have a function, as you can see. Now they're gonna ask us to do something weird about this function, okay? So if you look at it very carefully, it's a simple enough function. It's just two x squared minus seven x minus 10. But they wanted to write it into this form. And this is, of course, um, complete in the square form, okay? So the first thing they're looking at us to do is that obviously they want to factorize out something out of this. So let's do that. Let's turn two x squared minus seven x minus 10 and let's factorize out something. Well, the only thing I can factorize out for the x squared is the two. So if I take that out, I'm left with x squared minus seven over two x minus five, okay? So at least I've done something. I've gotten it closer to that. I've managed to pull this out. Now I just need to make all this bit matter, this other bit of it, okay? So um, I suppose the trick then is how do we do that? We look to this, okay? We look to this number here, okay? This number, what we're going to do is, we are going to um, get half of this number. In other words, multiply it by a half, or you know, divide it by two, whichever way you want to look at it. And we're going to add that number to this end of it. I'm going to use a different color if possible. We can find a different color. And then I do, yeah, there we go. So, what I'm going to do is, with this section of it, I'm going to add half whatever this coefficient is. And I'm also going to take it away. That's the important bit. Okay? Add it and take it away. And if I can do that, then it should allow me to complete the square on that and give me something. So half of that is going to be whatever is 7 over 4. Right. So, I'll try and work this out. So that's what's going to end up with being. And if I square that out, I'll get back what I want. And then I'm going to turn that. And I'm going to now. The problem is all of this, try and do this right, use a different color. All of this is multiplied by two. But I only want this multiplied by two, which means I need to take the two out of this bit. So that's really going to become and multiply that by two. And that's it done. Okay, so find the minimum point. It's the opposite of what's inside here with what's outside here. There's your minimum point, gosh. Okay, explain why it must have two real roots. Well, go back to your original equation. 2x squared minus 7x minus 10. A is 2, B is minus 7, and C is minus 10. So if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, the roots are real. The elements of the real numbers. So let's check that. b squared minus 7 squared minus 4 times 2 by minus 10 greater than 0. That is true. It is true. That's positive and that's positive. So two positives add together is going to give you a positive. Now, the last bit, write the roots in the form. Well, listen, if they're asking you to write the roots, well, then just write the roots. You're already halfway there. Use your minus B formula. So 7 plus or minus the square root of minus 7 squared minus 4 times 2 or minus 10 all over 2 times 2. Let me get a calculator out for this. And we are looking at... Okay, 7 over 4 plus or minus root 129 over 16. Ah, 129 over 16, I've seen that before. You see that? You can actually find the roots in the equation. Okay, so there's another kind of quick 
algebra revision. Okay, might come back and do another one of them in another another go. I might actually do one now. I don't know. I'll see. I'll just find another one. I might do one now. Let me find another one here. Nice. Here's another one. So I might just flip this over and do another one. 